Okay, anyway, my name is Greg Monroe. I work for a company called SolarWinds, which unlike most people presenting today is not in, in consultancy. Uh, I manage their uh, marketing website and a bunch of their secondary stuff. Uh, had a lot of other jobs in the past few years that I've been working on Drupal. A lot of them have been around search API. So uh, I figured that I would put together some best practices and show you how to get set up and go from there. So anyway, why use Search API? Well, it's highly customizable, and you don't need to do a lot of code. If you're using standard Drupal Search API, or Search, you really kind of have to dig around and, and do some coding to change anything. Uh, the other thing is, is that because of it ties into all sorts of different search engines, you can get Google Lite results, stuff that is uh, relative, ranked by relativity, uh, a lot of different boosts and stuff you can play around with it. Uh, when you go to build, uh, Pages, result pages, that comes just from views. So you're not using anything fancy, you're not using anything that you shouldn't already be familiar with. Uh, there's also multiple indices, so you can have uh, different search pages. So you can have one for you know, resources, blogs, product, product pages, things like that. Uh, it also supports facets. So you know, you've seen those on a lot of commercial sites where you know, like Newegg is one I like to use where you go and you search for a product and then you can select, I want this, only memory sticks of this size or greater. And it's only showing you what you can take that search result and filter it down to. So that's what a facet is. Uh, you know, the other thing is, you know, you can use high performance backends. Uh, the most popular one is uh, Solar, is Apache Solar. Uh, there is an elastic search uh, backend that works with this for, uh, Unfortunately, it's for D7 only. I haven't heard anything about them going to D8. Um, there's also uh, just a plain database. So if you don't want to have a fancy second server, you can use uh, your existing database in there. You know, the other thing too is it's an API. It's future-proof. So if some, some new search comes out or Google offers a, a replacement to uh, the custom search engine, and by the way, in case people don't know it, Google is shutting down the custom search engine service. So if you have any sites that depend on that for indexing, you're not going to be able to use that within the next six months. So, so quick word. You might hear people talk about Apache Solar. Apache Solar is not Search API. In D6 and in D7, well, I guess uh, Search API started in D7. Uh, Apache Solar started in D6 or D5. Uh, but basically, uh, the developers got together and uh, with some other, other people, and they basically said, we're dropping Apache Solar and we're rolling that into Search API for Drupal 8. You know, the uh, thing to be aware of about it too is that as you go searching for modules to work with things, uh, you'll come across stuff, and make sure you read to know that, you know, especially in the D7 world, does this work with Search API or does it work with Apache Solar? Because they'll sound a lot similar, but they won't work. You know, you can't use an Apache Solar module with Search API. Okay, I thought, you know, I do a couple of sites I've uh, worked on in the past and do a, uh, a quick sites showcase here. Hopefully these videos will work so you can see them. So are you guys seeing uh, the new health site? No. So what I'm doing is Duke Health uh, is for the Duke Health system, and it's what, um, let me guess, is that not in your screen? No. Okay. Here we go, oh, it's on. There. Okay, yeah. I thought I had all this stuff worked out. Duke Health is 
kind of a hybrid site. It's actually a D7 site, uh, but the front end and stuff you're seeing here is for uh, is for Angular. There. So this is kind of the gold standard of things. You'll notice as you go through locations, treatments, doctors, it's all search based. Because the whole purpose of the site is to help people find the health services they need here. Uh, and you'll see here, these are basically Angular. Angular is making use of the solar facets capability to just kind of like as you select a specialist or uh, what, what you're looking for here. Uh, doing things like auto autocomplete in there. Uh, and you couldn't see because the string is, is small the doctor pictures were changing as you select each different facet in there. Um, it also has the bar at the bottom there where you can select like, you know, how far away it is from me. You know, so like this is, this is pretty much a gold standard for uh, doing a search API, using search API in there. So the other one I was going to show, I think I'll skip straight to SolarWinds, which is my current site. Uh, here, I'm showing you the blog search that we use here. Uh, nothing really fancy, you just enter, enter a search and then it jumps to a page. Uh, you know, you'll notice that we're using, uh, because we can use views, we can actually customize the layout to match the content type that you're using here. And you also see on the side are the facets that say, you know, these are the tags on the blog. So if you want to take your search and, and uh, limit it to those specific tags, you can, or you can search by date in there. So it's not, you know, it's not really fancy, but that's probably what most people will aspire to is something like this in there. So kind of a good mix of, if I want something that's good, simple, and easy to do, you can do this. If you want to take it to the, uh, to the Duke Health system, with enough extra coding and time, you can you can create some really fancy search applications. So. So. For the multimedia, I was going to get in trouble here. Okay. So, you guys see the. Uh, uh, oops. Okay. Basic architecture. Ah. So, you know, this is some, some background around uh, the basic architecture here. You know, it all starts with what kind of search engine you're using. You know, uh, the search engine like Solar handles the actual storage of the data uh, and the retrieval and basically the, the heavy lifting of the indexing there. Um, you can also use just a database server. There's a back end that's just database. Um, it has some limitations. I'll, well, I'll cover that a little bit later. But, you know, there's some minor limitations compared to Solar and a lot of it depends on, on what your final uh, product you want to have. Um, the other thing is, you know, the next step of it is, is a search backend. So it's an API. So part of the terminology is somebody has to write some code that takes the API calls from search API, that search API defines and convert that to the native calls for like solar or in the case of the backend, it actually kind of emulates a lot of solar features using the database. So that's just a sort of terminology there. And the final kind of part of the basic architecture is search indices. So those are basically where you, those are where you can go in, uh, pick like what you want to index for this index. So for instance, there's an index for all blog articles on the, on the SolarWinds site. You know, there's also an index for all product resources. There's an index for the full site. So you know, those are you can set that up depending on what you want to be searchable. And, and the context you want it to be searchable. So uh, this is kind of a little bit more complex diagram. I'll try to walk you through it here. But if you start with like an index event, well, an index event is generally 
somebody say something you said you want to be indexing, like a node or an entity. It can also be uh, done by cron. So you basically, Surge API sets up a cron job that, you know, they will go through and say what needs to be indexed, what's changed since I've last indexed it, and it will update the index. And you can also manually update the index, either through the GUI or through Drush. So, so when, when an index event happens, the search API will run it through a pre-index processor, which are configured through the Google GUI, and you can also code your own if you want to, but mostly people will just pre-index, use the, the existing, existing ones. Um, and those basically massage the data a little bit. So, you know, if you want to do, um, if you want to have ignore case type of searches, the index preprocessor will take all the stuff coming in and make it lowercase in there. So that then feeds into the search backend, uh, which translates into the native API and then store and sends it off to like Solar or uh, the Apache or the database in there. So on the other side, so that's how you kind of build the, the quick highlights of how you build or populate an index, I should say. Um, when you want to display or search for those, you're basically just using views. There are ways you can do a, a normal page, but views is the, is the pretty standard way. Um, so you create, a, I'll go into it a little bit later, but you create a special view. It has a query, you know, it could just be something that says search, or it's just a view, so you can add as many external filters, exposed filters as you want in there. So when, they, when somebody submits one of those, it goes to the preprocessor queries, which does some magic stuff, ends up converting it to the native query for like solar or for uh, the database search. And then the results are passed back and Search API lets you post-process the results in various ways. Uh, one of the nice ones there is creating a uh, highlighted excerpt. So just like in Google where you go search for a term you, and you get the results and the term is highlighted in the, in the page results, um, that's where you would get that. And you're, you know, you end up displaying a page. That's just basically a view display. So nothing, uh, nothing too fancy. Uh, on the bottom here, you see facets are actually is actually a module that interacts with the, the search views, and you can set up, and they will create blocks that you can add. I'll talk a little bit more about this later. Um, data source and field definition. Uh, those, when you set up a search index, uh, I'll talk about this, but basically the data source is in this index, what am I, what am I indexing? And that could be just about any, any entity type in, the, uh, in your, in your uh, site. Generally, most people just stick with what's called content, which is node, node entities. But if you have a special site where you have entities that aren't your regular node entities, you could actually index them. Field definitions, basically those are what, you know, what node, what fields and nodes do you want to add to the database, the search database, so that you can search on them. Things like, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So I won't go into detail there. So question, which backend do you choose? A lot of it depends on kind of your needs, your technical skills, and your comfort with um, setting up third-party software or whether or not you've got a supplier like Acquia that has solar. Solar is designed from the ground up to be a search engine. It was you know, almost designed to, from the ground up to compete with uh, Yahoo. I think it actually started before Google took off. So I think it was really uh, Yahoo was their uh, uh, benchmark. Um, it's clusterable. The Duke Health site that, you, that I showed you actually has three uh, solar servers that are all clustered and have, they have redundancy uh, so that one of those can go down and the site will still stay up in there. Uh, the other thing is, the bad thing about solar is that it's a separate application and when you need to go in and start learning it, uh, you know, there's a little steeper debugging, enhancing has a little bit steeper learning curve. It's not impossible, but you know, it depends on your skills, what, what you want to do, what you need for your site. The DB backend is very full featured and very useful. That's actually what we're currently using on uh, at least the initial rollout on the SolarWinds site. 
we're able to get all the, the excuse me, dry mouth, uh, all of the features we wanted to work with the, the DB backend. It's easy to set up. You enable a module and you're and you're done. You know. Uh, Overall, it's slower, slower, and not quite as scalable. But for most most normal sites, I think you have to get up into the five to ten thousand page with some complicated searches before you really. Uh, that's that's just sort of gut gut feel, not based on any benchmarks. So you know, it's kind of a case that you could start off with the database, play around with it, and if you start getting performance problems, then you, you need to upscale to uh, solo. Which once again, because of the design is very simple. You can just basically go and install solar backend, go into your indexes, point it to the new solar backend, and you don't lose any of your developed work with the database. So feel free to stop with any questions. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this fairly fast since uh, I ended up with a lot of slides and most of this is hopefully some of it's pretty self-explanatory, but you know, the set, how do you set this up? You know, standard stuff. If you need a backend service, you have to figure out how to install solar. I'm not going to go into that, but it involves basically installing. Uh, if you're good, if you're using a, a Linux uh, environment, there are packages that you can just install the solar package, which will get the base installed for you. Um, then you have to copy some of the config files from the, the module over. That's kind of the, as deep I'll go into. There's a bunch of other little things you have to do. Um, but the other thing is to install modules. Once you've installed the modules, configure your back end, then start setting up your indices. Once you've got the indices set up, populate them. And uh, then, you know, you create a results view. And once you've got the results view, you can add facets to it. That's kind of the quick view of it. So what modules? And by the way, I've been, I have this out on slides here. The last slide has the um, where you can find this, or you could just Google Google SlideShare CG Monroe search API, and it'll probably come up by now. So anyway, uh, modules and the like. Well, the required items are really search API, uh, a search backend. Now, search API in Drupal 8 comes with both Solar and the database backend. In D7, uh, the database backend is a separate project. It's been rolled into uh, the core core search API, uh, and then you know if you're going to use Solar, you need to have set up the Solar backend. If you're using database, you know you you can get fancy and point it to a different database than your Drupal site, but most people just embed it in the Drupal site, so it's a zero zero extra install. Okay, some useful modules. Uh, and once again, I'm focusing on D8. Most of this stuff is available and pretty much the same in D7. Um, so there is a facets uh, module. I forget, it's called something else in uh, D, D7, or I think it may be a part of core in D7. They split it out of core, of the core search API into a separate module for D8. Uh, autocomplete. Uh, warning about autocomplete, it's kind of flaky. Sometimes it works, some, I mean, sometimes you can get it to work, and sometimes, for some reason, it won't attach itself to the forms. They're still kind of, especially in D8, they're still working on that. Uh, one that's kind of nice is, or almost a necessity, is the search API exclude entity. Because, you know, Drupal will take, or this search API doesn't care about your site structure. So if you've got pages out there and you, you have used security by obscurity by not pub not linking them into your navigation, search will find them. And people will find them through your search engine. This is a module that lets you go through on pretty much on uh, node by node or entity by entity and say, do not index this. And you can actually break it down to say, do not index this in the blog or do not index this in the, you know, something else. So, you know, if you want to be in one search, Say you've got a private uh, admin only search versus a public search. So uh, there, the handbook page has a whole bunch of other modules here. I ran out of slide, slide space, so, so you can go out there and, and see those. So quick, I'm gonna run through these because I've got a lot of slides and I'm running out of time here. Uh, search API configuration, it's all under config, search and metadata, search API. 
in there. And behind it, you can kind of see a populated screen that you eventually will see. So the first thing is you define a search engine. That's fairly straightforward. I'm not going to go through all this stuff. Uh, you know, basically it depends on what back end as to what information you fill out there. Okay, so the next step, now that you've got your modules installed and a back end defined, you know, your, the temptation is just say, oh, I'm just going to go and click on add an index. You know, you can do that, but it's better off to kind of step back and say, okay, now what do I want to index? Am I doing blocks? You know, am I trying to do full site? Am I trying to do other specific things? Um, and you need to kind of look at the field structures of what you want to index and have that in mind. Uh, you know, and then, you know, the final thing is to start thinking about what is more important. You know, like if I find something in the title, is it more important than the body? Or do I have other fields like, you know, maybe I have a, a product field and if I find the word, the word that matches the product in a product field, maybe I want to give it a higher priority in the results. So you kind of start, start uh, there's a little bit of an art to doing this, but, uh, you know, there's things to think about. You know, and then the final thing is, you know, how do I want to display this? What, what information do I need in order to show what I want to show the, the end user in there? Because you may have fields you don't search, but you want to throw in the search engine so that you can use them in, in the, uh, the results display. So very general terms, and kind of, everybody's got a different specific need. So I'm going to run through how to set up an index, and I'm going to use basically the search, the blog search index that I showed you in SolarWinds. Uh, you know, so you blog posts have pretty standard things, title, body, tags, there's, rather than using the who created it, we actually have a, an author entity. So uh, we have a, a reference. When you create a blog, you select which author authored the blog or create a new author if it's somebody we haven't done a blog for. Uh, featured image, date published, and status, you know, whether it's published or not. Uh, you know, we want uh, author names and words and titles to be more important in there and the result should have title author date feature image highlight highlighted excerpts and be configurable by category which you all saw, kind of saw the end result there so first thing you do is you define a, a data source so a data source is basically saying what uh, if you kind of go through this list i'm not sure how well you can read that but the one that most people use is content which is notes but if you look, there is actually like there's a thing called Pageless Nodes. That's a that's a special entity we have on our site. Uh, search API knows it is that entity, and you could potentially do a search index against that. Mostly, if you're outside the content area, or there's also one at the bottom, user area, you're going to have to do some custom work. So, content is probably 99% of of what people want. Uh, so once you do that, a bunch of uh, you'll get a prompt at the bottom of the form to fill it out. And in this case, we're just doing blog posts. So content is showing you all the different content types on your, on your site. And you know, if you wanted to do a full site index, you could check them all. Um, in this case, I would just check blogs. Uh, it supports languages. Uh, our SolarWinds MSP site has five language or six languages, including English. And we do a search, we have a, a language index or index, if you're in German, you search German content, you get German results. With the exception of a few pages that are marked as translated, but still haven't been translated. <laughs> but the core of this stuff, all of our product stuff, all of our um, core stuff has been translated. So uh, this is just the end of it. Um, you know, the only thing that is kind of interesting is there is a checkbox here. I don't know if you can see it. It's marked read only, and it's read only. And, you know, first you go, why would I want to read only index? Well, one of the powers of this is you could actually use stuff that's stuck in solar from another system to display it on um, Drupal. So they didn't, they didn't actually, they thought we talked about this in the hospital system, but we didn't implement it. But we could have said, let's index stuff from Epic into solar 
And then when you're doing the search from the site, you're pulling the data from the Epic uh, hospital system uh, into, into Drupal. And Drupal is not indexing anything in that particular index. Specialty case, but an interesting one. So next thing is, how do you add fields? So um, when you add the index, there's a button. I think I missed that part of that slide, but there's a button that says, click here to, when you add the, when you finish up adding the core stuff in the data source and the other stuff what back end you're using, uh, you can say save and add fields. There's also a couple buttons that say add fields. Um, the stuff at the top that have the line next to it are some custom fields from, uh, that we use on our site. Um, so basically, this is where the structure comes into play. You can see that some of the things have little pluses there. That means like if you've got an entity reference field to say like a term for tags or like the author um, node, you can expand those and get to the fields on that specific entity. So you can go to the author and index the first name and the last name if you want to do that. So hopefully, let me see if I can do another little video. So this is a, a rather speeded up way of uh, probably we will find it, but you'll see it going through selecting the fields that I need for that block author index, expanding them, selecting the stuff. Uh, one, one, D7, I, one D7 thing I should point out is when, if you have a lot of fields on your D7 site and you go to add a field in D7, you will probably get at least two this page has a, a script that is misbehaving, continue or kill. Press continue because it can take, um, I think for the hospital site, the record was two and a half minutes to get to the point where you could add a new field. So it's just what they do in D7, as opposed to D, in D8, they actually do Ajax calls, which speeds it up. In D7, they just loaded everything. So it's got to walk through all the fields, all the combinations, and so. Back to you. Okay. Yeah. And now it works. Okay. So once you once you've added the fields, you'll come to what they call configuring the fields, and this is where some of the magic. Uh, happens, you know. One of the one of the things that you want to consider, if I'm searching for keywords, the fields that I want to be searched as keywords have to be marked as type full text. So you can see the title, the body, uh, the blog channel term name, uh, and the blog author title has been marked as full text. So uh, there's other content types like, you know, just string, boolean, integer, real number. Um, for instance, in the, in the Duke Health site, you, the, in order to get the who's located near, we were actually putting longitude and latitude of where the doctors work or where the, uh, where the office is so we could do some of that filtering stuff. Um, the other column, boost, is where you can say, you know, oh, if I find this word in the title, Count, you know, take that, the number of times you find it in the title, times one. So your relevancy score, how, the way you order things is maybe how relevant things are. So, you know, the more, it basically goes through and it says, I found this term in five places in this document. If there was no, if all boosts were equal, that would be a score of five. You know, if, if, the, if by boosting in title, it basically will say, oh, well, this is, you, know, you can add, you can say if it's in the title, it's up to 10. So if you want to make the title really important, you give a lot of boost in there. Uh, I'm not really going to go in, but that's a whole other topic and discussion on the art of how you manage to uh, order your results. 
in there. Because I guarantee you, once you get this thing up, the client's going to come back and say, can't you have this come up instead of that? And there's lots of tricks you can use to do that. Uh, so index processor. So the next thing you need to do once you've got the index set up is to say, how do I want to massage this data? You know, and, and what do I need to, to do in there? And a lot of this can help shape the results in there. So basically, underneath when you, uh, in the uh, tabs for doing the indexes, uh, there'll be a select processors. Um, one that has side effects that will got, uh, gotcha side effects is people come along and say, well, I want to use this what's called entity status, which says don't, don't index unpublished items. Don't do that. The problem with that is um, if somebody, a blog author comes along, posts a blog, says, whoops, that's not what I want to say, that's not what I wanted to say, and then unpublishes the blog, because it's unpublished, the change to unpublished does not get indexed. So the blog still exists in the index and is findable through the index. So it's better off to include the status and then on the view side, when you do the results, filter out whether or not it's published or not. So some other, uh, to go through some other stuff, quickly, you know, highlighting, this is the way you can get uh, highlighting results in there. Uh, HTML filter uh, is probably a good thing to do because it'll strip out the HTML, uh, keep you from getting lots and lots of search for BRs and finding it, search for paragraphs and finding it. Uh, ignore case, ignore case, ignore case is a good one. Um, if you're doing uh, hierarchical terms, index hierarchy, stimmer. Stimmer is a good one. Uh, basically, what that does is, if you put in like security, if stimmer will go through and say, "Well, the root of security is secure without the e," and I will search for that term. So you will get secure, security, cybersecurity. You know, so it, it improves the, the. It does more Google-like results by doing that. Uh, and if you have a multilingual site, uh, transliteration is usually a pretty good thing to turn on. It depends. If you've got some very picky foreign language people that say, I can't find something with the umlaut, then you may not want to do transliteration. But in general, we find that it works better. Uh, the other thing, briefly, process order, you can arrange these. You probably won't change those. Uh, processor settings. Each, each of these processors, you can go through and, and tweak things. Uh, one gotcha is if you set up your index and you do all your processors, and then you come back and say, oh, I need to add this field, is verified that the, pro that the processors are, are using that new field. For instance, uh, if you add a new field that's a full text, uh, full text field, and ignore, you don't make sure it's an ignore case, the words from that particular field will go in just the way they're typed. And you won't find that field because, you know, if it's capitalized, it doesn't match the lowercase. So just make sure you come back to the processor settings and, and make sure that's set up there. So populate your index. That's fairly straightforward. This is the, uh, the manager index page here. Um, you can see the controls down there. A lot of times you may want to uh, you know, remove all, if you've made some changes or you, you've done some major content changes or something, you might want to say, oh, remove all these terms and just remake the index. Um, one thing to note is rebuilding an index, depending on how many uh, stuff, how much stuff you can have, can take, you know, several minutes. So you may have some short downtime for searching if you're doing this on a, on a uh, public server in there. So, so. Yeah, quickly running out of time. And index views. This is the way that you get your results. Basically, it links uh, to the index data that you the, you set up at the indices. Uh, you can supply supply a configurable full text search index. So that's a you know search for keywords across all of these uh, fields. Uh, can you know you can apply view filters and stuff like that. You can. Uh, sort by relevance. It's a lot. It basically does a very good job of integrating with views in there. So, how do you create a views result? Well, once you've got Search API set up, there will be a, an index, uh, a, a view option for each index that you've created. 
So index my blog, and you can see we have an index for full site and index for uh, resources on on this site. Standard views, you know, the some of the things that uh, uh, are different. The search excerpt in the results there. That's what's going to return, um, you know, the results with the highlighted excerpts in there. One little trick is to I include the body and get a summary of the body and then use that as the no results for the uh, uh, search excerpt. So if somebody just goes to the search page, you get results. You don't just get a list of titles, you get something that looks reasonable. You get sort of a teaser list of everything in the blocks thing. Um, I, tend to, I tend to hide everything and then use a custom field to kind of do the, the formatting to get it right in there. Um, it's views, you can do it in a tweak template, you can do whatever you want to uh, that way. Uh, filter criteria, you'll see the search, uh, full text search filter. That is, you know, when you see the word search there, that's what you're seeing in there. Uh, the, other, the other thing is uh, sort criteria where you can do sort by, uh, by rebel, or, uh, rebel, uh, rebel, I never, well, anyway, relevancy, sorry. And the rest of the stuff in terms of pagers and what fields you can throw in there are pretty close to the same as uh, you would normally expect. There are some limits in the fields you can add. They're tied to the data source and the index fields. Um, by data source, it means if you have a node, usually you can get all of the fields for the node that was found type thing. So facets. Facets are basically done by subsetting uh, of the views that you create for an index in there. You know, they support a lot of widgets, range, drop down, sliders. They keep adding, people keep adding widgets to it. Uh, it can show you kind of the counts of related items with fields, and it can sort them so that you know, your facet will show up with the most results, the most items that match this keyword to the, the fewest on a term. So you don't have to be stuck by alphabetical sorting of the term in there. Uh, you know, and they're linked to fields in the index verse and just page, placed on the blocks, a uh, page as blocks. So it's fairly straightforward. Under admin configuration search and metadata facets, uh, you will see if you've created a, a search index, you'll see the kind of the machine name for uh, the facet source there. And then all you really have to do is once, you, once you've created one search index, you can go and say add a facet. Uh, first step is kind of like doing a block. You say, okay, I'm using this view, I'm using this field in this facet, and I'm you know, giving it a name that you'll see as a block name. And then after that, uh, you get to go in and kind of edit a lot of the different settings. You can choose the widget you're going to use. You know, it could be a list of check boxes or a list of dates. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other settings you can do. I won't go through all of those, but uh, uh, you can play around with those and see what the results are on your own. So the results with some block placement, some uh, custom, well, in this case, on our site, we used a custom search form so that we could place it in the header and across the stuff. Uh, it doesn't need to be coded custom search form. It could actually just be um, HTML form that does a submit, does like a git submit with question mark keywords. Or when you create, when you create the view exposed filter, uh, you can specify what the name on the, on the uh, URL are, would, would use for this argument. I tend to use query or keywords in there. Uh, which the nice thing about that is that people can take a search and send it to somebody with those arguments there and have it show up when they click on the link there. So anyway, some, some uh, CSS TLC. Oops. That might be. So this is, you know, you kind of saw it again. That's the custom search block, search block for blocks here. And let me see if I can stop this. So you'll see, you know, you've got the title, got the formatting where it's showing the MSP business is the main category it's under. We've got the featured image, we have the title, we have the author, we have the date that it was published, 
and the excerpt there is showing, you know, you can see the stimming in action because it's highlighting secure, not the whole security. Uh, we've actually got a, a ticket in our built thing. I need to write some custom code to expand that out. Apparently, you know, they, they don't do that yet. So, and I think that's, well, I, mean, I can't think of anything else that was on this. So I'll, I'll call it and ask for questions, comments. Totally confused because it was a fire hose presentation. So, oh, I mean, I guess I should go back to the, uh, oh yeah, I guess it uh, did have a next step, uh, partially populated. You know, the next step really is once you've got results, people are gonna come back and say, how do I optimize the search? You can play with Boost. There's lots of different ways to, to deal with that. That's one kind of thing that Solar probably outshines the database stuff because Solar being an open source project, there's all sorts of different plugins and stuff, but you're really starting to get into advanced solar uh, configuration there. Uh, in fact, at the hospital, they hired a third party, you know, the, they hired a third party vendor who was an expert in solar optimization to get the search results the way they wanted it. Um, so, and now, yeah, the other thing is make sure, you know, go through and see what's there that shouldn't be there so you can filter it out. I apologize, I forgot I didn't finish this slide. And questions, and the reason for that is if you want to find the slides, here they are. If you need to get in touch with me or find out more about me, drupal.org, UCG Monroe. Oh. So the question is with the uh, search API exclude could content authors manage? Yeah, the way, at least on D8, the way that it works is you go in and add a field to each content type, or you know, the content types that are involved, and then it shows up in the tabs on the side where you set the URL and um, the metadata and all that stuff as, you know, do not index. So you click on it, checkbox, and it's done. Now, the question is, will, this, will your content authors remember to do that when they need to? It's a whole different process. So, yeah, you know, ideally, if you really have that kind of security, that's when you may look at the new, the new uh, workflow modules that are coming out to where, you know, something needs to be approved. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So uh, the root type of search engines are you know, backend features, then using the Google database or using something like so. So if the use case of uh, searching something within an uploaded document, like a content of PDF, right. so does both of these approaches cover that, or we need something additional? In our yeah, the, uh, there is. The question is, you know, can you uh, paraphrase? Can you uh, create index PDFs or other documents? Yeah, so you know, something within the content of the yeah. Uh, the, an the answer is yes, if you can set it up the right way. Um, there is a, so a search API attachments, I believe, uh, module. It's dependent upon having a one or two uh, command line. It's basically Linux based, and there are a couple of uh, tools that like take PDF and convert it to text. So basically, you know, when you submit uh, a node that has the attachment and you mark that as being the field you want to index, it will run it through, it will do a system command, run it through and create the text. You know, uh, one of the things we discovered is we use Acquia as our uh, uh, provider and they don't allow those tools to be on their server because they, you know, you're shared, it's a shared resource and they don't want your site to, to bog it down. So, so yes, it is possible, but there are hurdles. What's the exact tool? Um, it, the module, I think, was search API underscore attachments. No, the, the Linux. Um, I can't. I, I go to the module and it'll have it in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It will take Microsoft documents and PDFs and everything else and just straight text out. It's a little Java thing, so we wouldn't really solo. Yeah. Java anyway. Yeah. 
takes a lot to <laughs> It works pretty well. Yes. Paying it and looking set up. Once it's working, it just works. Yeah, and there are, well, I, I think I have had some odd word document formatting that doesn't, it, it ch chokes on. The solution there is just say, tell, tell people to post PDFs, they should be posting word documents anyway. Of course, some government people have that requirement. I think the PowerPoint is also as well as the main thing about Yes, you can run it on the desktop. It produces a little window, you drag your that's actually the end, is it? And the text goes in. So I'll give you an idea of what we're looking at. So, so if you've got a text one, it doesn't work, I can just test it my desktop or whatever. Okay, well, I've been a little bit over, but not too much. It's like when I got my presentation done and it had 35, 32 slides, I'm like, going, hmm, 45 minutes and 32 slides. <laughs> and I managed it. Yeah, thank you.